Hi, my name is Richo Higashinaka uh, from NTT. The title of my talk is Integrated Taxonomy of Errors in Chat Oriented Dialogue Systems. Let me talk about the overview of my presentation. As you know, chat oriented dialogue systems are attracting much attention in recent years. Yet, the performance of these systems is still unsatisfactorily leading to dialogue breakdowns. So to improve systems, it is important to understand the kinds of errors made by the systems. And for such a purpose, a taxonomy of errors would be useful. There are two existing taxonomies. One is theory-driven and the other data-driven have been proposed but they have pros and cons. So we integrated the two taxonomies to create a, create a comprehensive one. And we evaluated the proposed taxonomy with inter-annotator agreement. Let me go over the two taxonomies. The first one is theory-driven taxonomy. There are 16 error types in this taxonomy. This tax taxonomy is based on principles in dialogue theories that explain the cooperative behavior in human dialogues. The main category here defines the scope of the context, and subcategory defines specific error types indicating how non utterance violates crisis maxims. The pros is that it is based on the well-established theory of dialogue, so it can cover a wide variety of phenomena. As for cons, it has quite a low inter annotator agreement. This is because Grassi's maxima, maxims are difficult to apply to human-machine human dialogues, which contain many errors. This is a second existing taxonomy called data-driven taxonomy and it has 17 error types. It uses the dialogue data of chat-oriented dialogue systems to identify typical errors made by such systems. And it was created by first collecting comments, describing errors made by the systems, and then clustering the comments. As for pros, it can capture the errors in human computer dialogue, and therefore it achieves better kappa. As for cons, it is too dependent on the data and the analysis, and the data taxonomy may not be applicable to new types of errors that may arise in the future development. So in our approach, we integrate the two existing taxonomies to create a comprehensive one. We decided to integrate the two taxonomies in order to create a comprehensive one because each has shortcomings that can be covered by the other. The integration has two steps. Step one, we first expand the theory-driven taxonomy by adding the distinction of form and content so that it can better handle the violation of the normative form of dialogue, which frequently occurs in human system dialogue. So we expand this theory-driven taxonomy into this. We have the distinction of form and content. And in the step two, we place the error types in the theory and data-driven taxonomies into the frame. This is a frame. And we place the error types in the existing taxonomies into the cell of this frame. And in placing the error types, some error types needed to be renamed, merged, or split to better fit the frame. This is what we did. And as a result, we obtained this integrated taxonomy. We have the four levels and violation form and violation content and the error types that used to be in the existing taxonomies. I'm going to go over the error types in each level from now. 
So let me talk about the uh, trans level errors. The violation of form in this level indicates the violation of the form of language. That is the Japanese language in this work. As for the violation of form, we have, for example, I1 uninterpretable, which means that the utterance is uninterpretable. So this is an example. I don't know how to pronounce this one. And it is a meaningless word in Japanese, therefore violates the form of language. As for the violation content, we have semantic error, we have wrong information, and as for I3 semantic error, the example looks like I'm good at raining. This is a violation of content because it is okay in the form. And this is error because one cannot be good at raining. It is semantically wrong. As for I4 wrong information, the example would look like this. Bob Dylan, who is a member of the Beatles, has released a new album. And this is wrong because Bob Dylan is not a member of the Beatles. So this is a violation of content. This is the error types in the response level. The violation of form in this level indicates that the utterance does not exhibit an appropriate backward looking function for a user's previous utterance when it has a forward looking function. As for the violation of form, we have, for example, I5 ignore question. So the utterance is ignoring the user's question, like in this example. The user says, what do you eat? And the system says, I like sports, which is not answering the question. We also have I8, ignore greeting. This is ignoring the user's greeting, like in this example. So there, the violation form not responding with an appropriate backward looking function. As for the violation of content, we have, for example, I9, ignore expectation. The example looks like this. The user says, do you have favorite sweets? And the system says, yes. But here, the system should tell the user the name of its favorite sweets. As for the context level errors, the violation of form in this level indicates the violation of the continuation of topics. When the system utterance is off topic or has elements not relevant to current topics, the form is considered to be violated. For example, as for the violation of form, we have I10, unclear intention. The example looks like this. The user says, hello, I like strawberries. And you? And the system says, I like apples. And the user says, I like the color red. And the system says, strawberries are delicious. But here, it is not clear why the system suddenly mentions strawberries, although it said it likes apples. So the intention is not very clear. Therefore, we consider it to be a violation of form. As for the violation of content, we have I-15 repetition, for example. The dialogue looks like this. The system says, I'm looking forward to watching a movie. And the user says, oh, yes. And the system says, yes, yeah. The user says, what else do you like? And the system says, I look forward to watching a movie, which is almost the same as this utterance. So this is regarded as a repetition error. As for the social level errors, the violation of form indicates that the utterance is violating a social norm in a conversation, for example, being offensive to the user. As for violation of form, we have I-16, lack of sociality. The example looks like this. The user said, the other day I went to XX. Here, XX is a country name. The system said people in XX are foolish, aren't they? And this is clearly violating a social norm, being offensive to the people in XX. So this is a violation of form. As for violation of content, we have seven, I-17, lack of common sense. 
the example looks like this. Do you want to talk about his talk? The system says his talk is good, isn't it? His talk is usually a bad thing. And this opinion is quite opposite to what is believed in the society. So this utterance is lacking common sense. Therefore, it is a violation of content. So I have uh, explained about the taxonomy. So now the evaluation. For the evaluation, we use the data sets of dialogue data of past dialogue breakdown detection challenges. The data contains the data of three different dialogue systems. Each utterance annotated with dialogue breakdown labels by 30 annotators. We sampled 80 dialogues from the data set and it contains 599 system utterances that were deemed inappropriate by more than a half of the annotators in dialogue breakdown annotation. The procedure was follows. Two experts and 10 crowd workers performed error type annotation with theory-driven, data-driven, and integrated taxonomies. And this was a multi-label annotation. And the annotators annotated 599 system utterances with the error types. The evaluation metric was weighted flashes copper. And this slide shows the results. Please look at the table. As you can see, the value for the integrated taxonomy is quite high, higher than the previous taxonomies. The inter agreement here was higher for the integrated taxonomy compared with the theory and data-driven ones, with reasonable kappa values indicating that the proposed taxonomy is effective. The good results of the crowd workers indicate that the concepts of the error types were well conceptualized and easy for non-experts to understand. So let me talk about the confusion matrix. So this is a confusion matrix. And you can see that there are some areas of confusion in some parts. For example, here, this is a confusion between I5, ignore question versus I10, unclear intention. This may be because failing to answer the question can lead one to wonder why the system did not respond appropriately. There's also confusion here. This is a confusion between I10 and pre intention versus I11 topic transition error. This may be because of the individual differences in recognizing the topic in the utterances. There's also confusion between I10 and pre intention versus I12 lack of information. This may be because of the individual differences of, of ability in how much information can be complemented from the dialogue context. This slide now shows the distribution of error types in the systems. We show the results of the five systems. Three systems here are the systems used in the evaluation of this paper. And we have also the results of distribution of error types for two other systems, HBY and ILA. They are the recent neural-based systems in Japan, and they are quite similar to Blenderbots. As you can see from this table, there is a tendency for recent neural-based systems to suffer from I4 wrong information and I13 self-contradiction. We can confirm that consistency in factuality and personality becoming an issue in recent neural-based systems. This brief analysis shows that our taxonomy is useful for grasping error types in various chat-oriented dialogue systems. To summarize, we propose a new taxonomy of errors in chat-oriented dialogue systems. We integrated theory and data-driven taxonomies to create an integrated taxonomy. We evaluated the integrated taxonomy with Flysys Kappa and found that our taxonomy was better showing its validity. Finally, our annotation manual, both Japanese one and English version, is available at GitHub. Thank you for your attention.